Okay, this game, yeah, this game's got some, some problems. <laughs> I mean, I, it just came out, but... Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Base Bros Variety Show. Today we will be giving our initial thoughts on Operation Harsh Doorstop, a game developed by niche micro-celebrity slash PMC tactical operator Blue Drake 42 and his community studio, uh, Drakeling Studios. Just for some context, I've been watching Blue Drake since I was in high school many moons ago. When I heard he was spearheading a new indie hardcore shooter with gratuitous help from his community, I was, I was a bit excited. I haven't looked into him much, honestly, but his involvement is besides the point. Here at Base Bros, we focus on the games themselves. If there has been community drama surrounding this game, we simply don't care. People and companies' actions speak louder than words, and Doorstop has certainly left an impression. We want this to be constructive feedback for the Drakelink Studios team so that indie studios can evolve and fill the giant gap AA and AAA studios have left in the wake of the modern gaming void. Is OHD the groundbreaking genre redefining installment within the hardcore shooter space? No. No, no, not, not at all. And we'll be giving you our thoughts on why it fell short and what OHD can do to improve itself and truly live up to all the promises Blue Drake put out. First and foremost, this game is completely free. All the content, I mean all of it, is free. Now the development of the game was paid in Patreon money, but still the fact that it was released for free means there's no barrier for entry compared to the chunky prices of its competitors. So you won't have to pay around $200 to experience all of the eras the game has to offer. For free you get World War 1, World War 2, Vietnam, Cold War, and Modern Conflict eras. That being said, it's free game level quality, and that is quality sorely missed when actually playing OHD. With all of that in mind, with the game in its current state, I doubt any seasoned gamers out there would get more than an hour of good entertainment out of OHD. And that comes from the game's extreme lack of depth, mechanics, and polish. If you're a veteran of any of the popular hardcore slash historical shooters, then this game is a direct downgrade to what you're already playing. Which, it kind of pains me to have to say that. There are just so many more titles out on the market that do everything in this game far better. There is no structure to how matches play because apparently, and I quote, the community has to make it. A prime example being the devs expecting the community to make their own anti-cheat scripts and apparently their own game modes. From animations to squad cohesion, performance, sound design, gunplay, the list goes on. It all feels lacking in bare bones. There's just too much to list all at once. The community has to make it can only take you so far in my opinion. I don't think anyone wants to wait 8 months for decent game modes and quality of life features to come out. I mean honestly it's on the same wavelength as games as a service. Just because it's quote unquote community made does not mean you should release a game with no content or bad gameplay. The only game mode is a really basic attack defend mode that you've seen a million times before. Except this time, it's just a bland meat grinder where you can't tell what's going on 85% of the time. Everyone is scrambling like a chicken with their head cut off. The game wholly feels like a tech demo or a mediocre mobile game. The only somewhat neat thing about it is the reload animations, which are crisp and well done for an indie studio, which is sure to scratch the tactical autism itch. The maps are alright as well, serviceable enough for the one mediocre game mode they developed for the game but they are nowhere near Project Reality Squad, Rising Storm 2, Hell Let Loose, or Insurgency Sandstorm levels of polish or integration. So where can this game go from here? Hopefully the modding scene takes off and new content starts rolling out for OHD, and perhaps Drakeling Studios can produce some official core content for the game as well. It'd be amazing to have one game that encapsulates all of these eras of modern conflict that also has a plethora of popular game modes, maps, and factions. In the end, this all takes time and incentive from the community. OHD could take many paths from here. Two I see are a Theseus' ship future, where the base game is overridden completely with an abundance of amazing mods and updates. Or the more likely flavor of the month cycle, where the game is abandoned after a couple months and then lauded as a cult classic by some corked up white boy video essayist. 
I really hope OHD shines in the niche it's trying to occupy, but there are so many more competitors vying for that same spot that just blow it out of the water for $50 or less. It's going to take a lot of blood, sweat, and tears from the community to make this thing even on par with something like Squatter and Zergy Sea Sandstorm. Not even from a graphical perspective, but from a basic gameplay loop. These are resources I don't know if modders have in them, as there's already a vibrant scene for games like Squad and Insurgency that just use the, already uses superior base games. Why downgrade to make a cheaper copy? If there is one other game that has done this concept better, it is Ravenfield, which is ironically only made by one guy and has one of the largest repositories of community-made shooter mods. However, it has taken over half a decade of community involvement to put it where it is today. There's also Easy Red 2, which is also made by one guy. It's strictly set in World War II, but has an abundance of campaigns, missions, factions, and even vehicles that are just fun to mess around with for a couple dozen hours or so. Yet, it still has more gameplay depth than a studio that has been funded by thousands of dollars of Patreon bucks. We don't want to take any more of your time today, and we hope this video has been informative on the state of this new release. We personally won't be supporting or playing the game from here on out, and some part of us wants to be made wrong. Because that means the community was able to pull together and finish the mission the studio put out. It is a shame this game didn't turn out better. Best of luck to Blue Drake 42 and Drakeling Studios. Well, I mean, uh, they already kind of took your money. So yeah, I guess you paid for a mobile game on launch. Anyways, we promise more co positive content is coming soon. And just keep on gaming.